welcome to this ongoing soundtrack series where I analyze the musical score from some of the greatest movies, TV shows, and video games. It is here where I discuss how a soundtrack complements its corresponding title along with how it came to be. In this episode, I'll be going over the award-winning score of The Shape of Water, created by French composer Alexandra Desplat. Within the episode, I'll go over the score's submerged tone, Desplat's international and supernatural themes, and how he shaped his music to form emotion on the screen. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to find more soundtrack analysis on other titles in the future. Each week, you can find a new analysis video. Anyone that is coming back for another round, thank you greatly for your support. With all that said, let's begin. Director Guillermo del Toro repeatedly proves his successful capability of developing the inconceivable. Intertwining imagination into reality continuously pulls his audience into the creation without effort. And for The Shape of Water, Del Toro hired on Alexander Despla, who executed the best possible score for Guillermo's vision. In January of 2017, after the film has been completely shot, Del Toro presented his project to Alexandra, knowing the composer would be paramount to the unusual love story's tone. There is always the question which comes first, the score or the shooting, and it all depends on the director, producer, and their plan of action. It's always different. In the case for producer, director, and writer Guillermo, he met up with Alexandra when he had the initial idea for the movie years before, and wanted to team up with the composer for the first time. Now Guillermo is a passionate filmmaker who understands the destination of each of his films, and his selection for this movie's composer determined beforehand has allowed the director to understand how he wanted the movie placed during production. Despla was motivated to work with Guillermo due to his respect for all his movies, especially Pan's Labyrinth. In the end, he knew The Shape of Water would be Del Toro's biggest movie yet. What makes this movie and its score considerably different than Del Toro's other films is how it's represented. Guillermo hits a horror element in the larger part of his career, and if you were to guess the atmosphere of a story with an underwater creature directed by that horror-style director, you'd be pleasantly surprised. Even the music that Alexandra composes keeps the unknown specimen a creature rather than a monster. There isn't a section in the score that breaches the thought that the sea creature is unstable, and it's this important musical aspect that allows the audience to feel sympathy for this character. Alternatively, the closest thing to a monster in this film is the evolution of Michael Shannon's character Richard. He is placed in a spot that has pushed his boundaries and the music shows his escalation into lunacy. Emotion is obviously imperative in a film score. A story about a scaly waterman and a mute is very precise, thus the music in this case is essential to expressing the passion. The main opening track of The Shape of Water is a crucial motif of the film, with its subtle introduction to the main protagonist Eliza and beaming melody that highlights the romance theme. Although unintentional, Alexandra wrote the opening scene's melody with a consistent waving arpeggio, or a series of notes from a chord played in succession. The arpeggio can easily display a deeper meaning to the shape that water forms, and in this case, a series of waves. As I said, this tune wasn't deliberate, but Alexandra composes his compositions in a significant fashion that allows him to manifest his music by pure intellect. Rather than simply playing a melody and distributing it throughout the score, he analyzes his ideas based off the concepts, sounds, and characters that are formed from the story. With The Shape of Water, he directed his sound to resonate the unconscious form of water, and how it can construct a series of elements that are critical to the film. Therefore, Alexandra molded his score with waves of arpeggios and vibrant tones to hit the sentimental value of romance and the film's mystical descent. Alexandra also wanted to influence a musical abstract with his score. To him, The Shape of Water is a musical that identifies as a fantasy adventure drama, and since a majority of the movie doesn't involve the entire cast singing how happy they are, Despla establishes that concept in his motifs. Much like a musical, there are several climaxes that continuously keep the storyline in a plateau, and Guillermo's film is arranged in a similar manner with many build-ups and cooldowns. 
This is how Alexandra came up with the idea of running the music parallel to the story's accumulating timeline, by keeping a serene emotion until the film's many peaks, at which point the orchestra can blast on their instruments and throw them in every direction. Let's move in a slightly different direction. Let's talk about the motive power of this composition, water. Instead of pointing the literal sense of water and explaining how it can shape into anything, the soundtrack focuses on the figurative perception of it. Much like the physical form of it, water symbolizes love, in which it's transparent and continuously moving. Although it's impossible to physically see, it cannot be pulled apart. In other words, the music envelopes the sound of water to immerse the audience to the events of the story. One of the greatest aspects of The Shape of Water is its approach to its time era, expressing music in a contrasting time period with an ingredient of the imaginable. The film's music would need to imitate the state of that setting, European within the Cold War. But there needs to be a fantasy facet underlining the score, with the film revolving around water. Despla wanted to empathize an underwater reverberation, a blurred and obscure effect added in post-production. To implement the film's foreign sound, Alexandra mixed flutes, whistling, and an accordion within the orchestra. Using the accordion, he mimicked the popular Bandonian reed instrument to signify that the creature's original habitat was somewhere near South America. The whistle is the focal point for Eliza's silence, which is actually actress Sally Hawkins whistling in her scenes. Another primary instrument besides the accordion that Alexandra presents is the flute. With 12 flutes positioned in the orchestra, they eliminate the trumpet section altogether, to exhibit a calmer and clearer sound. The orchestra used for The Shape of Water is as unique as they come. Before I give my final thoughts on The Shape of Water, I want to give my thanks for everyone that has been massively supportive of the series. We have made 8 episodes of Score Uncovered now, and the support I've received from many of you have been incredibly generous. I know this is what I've been working for since I started YouTube almost three years ago, and I won't forget how you guys have motivated me through it. Based on your interest for The Shape of Water, I'll be analyzing The Revenant and The Godfather in the future. Next week, I'll be releasing my Westworld Score Uncovered episode, releasing on April 20th just in time for the second season premiere. If you want to request a movie, TV show, or video game for Score Uncovered, let me know here on YouTube or on my Twitter page. The Shape of Water takes many forms throughout the film, and its music helps introduce the audience to Eliza's fearless life. The score is incredibly distinctive to the story's design. Whether it's Eliza's theme or any other track, water is what shapes the soundtrack, and it's water that Despla aims to immerse the viewer through. The arrangement of instruments used are also unique to the given moment of time, underwater or not. Whether we are believing what is happening on the screen is imaginary or not, it's the music that attempts to persuade us to interpret the shape of water. I want to thank you for watching this episode of Score Uncovered. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode and let me know what you guys think of the film and its score. Ending the episode here, once more, thank you greatly.